here's what we've got so far. I have done the recapping. As you can see, these yellow caps are all the replacements. This um, cathode bypass capacitor on the output tube was completely off the charts in terms of value. All these guys were tremendously out of range. They're all changed. And then when I finished this, I decided to check again to see what had happened to the radio. And to my surprise, it was still almost as deaf as it had been before. So I had a closer look and uh, it brought me back to the original problem we had here, which was this coil being disconnected and the oscillator not working. And as we saw in the last video, we got the oscillator working. We could see the, uh, the sine wave, the oscillator signal on the oscilloscope. What I didn't do at the time was really take careful note of the values of those frequencies. And um, what I did now was precisely look at that. And I'm going to show you how I went through this. I found the problem. I haven't corrected it yet. But I want to show you how some of these assumptions that one makes can come out completely wrong. And I've made many assumptions in the past about types of components that supposedly never go wrong. And this one bit me in the ass. Now, I'm going to set it up again. I'm going to switch it on and I'm going to show you the scope and we're going to see what range of frequencies we get on the uh, local oscillator. OK. For the purpose, I'm going to use this little detector coil again to uh, detect the uh, frequency or the uh, signal, the oscillator signal. I'm putting it, coupling it just lightly near that uh, coil, the oscillator coil, the one that we uh, reinserted. Uh, and here we've got it. Now, what I've done is I've got it at the, whoops, that moved. I've got the tuning dial at the far end. And what we see here is a frequency over here of 2273. Let's call it 2273 kilohertz. All right. Now, if I move the tuning capacitor, it's dropping and dropping. And now it is at the other end or practically there. It's at the far end. So what we have here is 1429, call it 1429 kilohertz. That is the extent of our oscillator variation, the frequency of the oscillator, the local oscillator signal on medium wave. Let's try the long wave now. With the dial at the far end, I don't seem to be getting any oscillation. Oh, there it starts. Let's reduce increase sensitivity. Maybe that's the problem. So it sort of starts here at nine, about 980. Let's call it 980. 980 kilohertz. And let's see to where it goes. Turning the dial. And it's reaching, there we go. 107, 1073. That's the extent of my long wave oscillator frequencies. Now, when I saw this after repairing that coil, I looked at this and I saw the shape was stretched kind of funny, but that's not unusual. And um, I didn't think of looking carefully at the frequencies. So when I thought about it, I realized something. Let me show you. This is what we've got. Medium wave, minimum frequency 1429, maximum 2273. Long wave, minimum 980, maximum 1073. I know that the IF is 460 kilohertz. So the uh, oscillator frequency is above the tuned frequency by that amount. So that when it mixes, the IF comes out at the frequency that I want to tune to. Now, if I subtract 460, from both of those, I get a minimum frequency of 969 and a maximum frequency of 1813 kilohertz. 
Now that's a problem because according to these uh, specs, I should have 515 to 1620. 515 to 1620. So you see, I can never tune to that frequency because my minimum frequency is 969. I also tune above that because my maximum frequency is above 1620. So the whole thing is shifted up in frequency. The same occurs here. The minimum frequency I can tune to is 520. Now that's already in the medium wave band. And the maximum is uh, 613, which is well within the medium wave band. So again, I've got the same problem because what I should be tuning for is 145 or so to about uh, 340. Those are the frequencies that I'm trying to reach. Again, I can never get anything on that band. Now, this thing fooled me for two reasons. One, I normally don't get anything on long wave anyway. And the way I discovered this is I actually put in a, uh, a signal at about uh, 250 kilohertz modulated into the antenna and I was trying to find it and I couldn't find it anywhere. And it's no, no wonder because it wasn't tuning at all uh, within that range, at least uh, where I wanted it to be. Uh, I did the same on, uh, on the uh, medium wave. I had something at about 800 kilohertz and it just it wasn't anywhere. And so I discovered that both on medium wave and long wave my uh, oscillator frequency ranges were completely off what they should be by about, in this case, 450 something. And this again got me because when I was tuning a frequency, when I was tuning for my signal on medium wave, I actually heard the signal and it was at about 460, 450 above where it should be, where it indicated on the dial. Or rather, the dial indicated about 460 hertz kilohertz above where I had uh, the frequency I had sent in. So this confused me because it was in that in that particular range it was pretty close to the IF. So I was getting this uh, IF frequency completely confused with the actual difference that I was getting here. Then I realized that in this case the difference is different. It's about 200 kilohertz and in this case it's about uh, 280 and this one is about uh, 280 or so. So I got thinking about this and I went and looked at the schematic again. Now, the one thing that you may have realized with this radio is that it's a pretty simple radio for a German set. I mean, let's have a look at it. I'll show you. This is the full extent of the underside of the radio. Now, it's pretty simple. It's actually nothing complex. It's uh, almost not Germanic in its philosophy in that they haven't over-engineered too much here. You've got the uh, input there, the antennas. You've got a little board with uh, the tubes, the uh, detector, the preamp, the IF tubes. Uh, very few components on the top side, a couple of uh, small capacitors. There's the output tube, the filter cap over there, the tuning block over here with their, you know, what you'd expect. A lot of resistors, uh, the coils, a couple of caps. And that's what we're getting on this. It's not a complex radio like some of the ones I've done. Let me compare, I'll show you. Have a look at this and let me show you something to compare this to. Have a look at this guy. This is a Saab of Freiburg 125 that is going to be restored sometime. And this is the underside of that radio. Also German, more or less the same era, a little bit newer. But have a look at the insides of this thing. It's incredibly packed. It's scary, which is probably why I haven't started it yet. But this is the sort of complexity that, uh, that you'll find in some of these sets. It's a nightmare to get to some of these components. The circuitry is incredibly over-engineered. The quality is exceptional. But this is what these radios are like. And compared to the one I'm doing, <laughs> this is uh, the Big Daddy. The other one is a, an embryo. So I figured I can't let this thing beat me. I mean, there's something obviously simple that's causing the difference in that oscillation frequency. So I had another look at the oscillator circuit, started measuring everything again, and stopped assuming something that I'd assumed all along. 
this is the oscillator circuit which you've seen before and if you look at it it's pretty simple you have your triode here that acts as the amplifier creating that feedback and creates the oscillation you have a feedback network here you have the output is on pin 6 over there but this output is the mixed output so this will be the IF frequency modulated with the radio station this will be the IF output what I'm interested in is this side over here these sections there now I checked these obviously I checked that made sure there's continuity and I checked that one corrected that one and I figured maybe I'd done something wrong there so I rechecked that then I went one step further and did some thinking for a change and my thinking was in both of these bands, both the medium wave and the long wave, the frequency is wrong. It's, it's shifted. Now, the only thing that will shift it is if one of the components that's causing the oscillation frequency is off. And the two components that are common to both the AM, or both the um, medium wave and long wave, are the tuning capacitor. So I checked that value. It's supposed to be 427 picofarads. It came out at 434, I believe. So that was fine. I checked that guy over there that also affected. That thing there is tuning. That's the adjustment you make to correct the dial position on the, on the lower end. And then you adjust that one to correct the dial position on the top end. I tried messing with those and I got a slight variation, very slight variation in frequencies. So that couldn't do it. And also this would affect one of the bands, not the other. That one there could affect both because it does come into the circuit with both. Check that value is fine. Anyway, this is one of those dog bone type capacitors that never go wrong, right? Well, the one, the two components or the one component really, other than the tuning cap, that will affect both is this guy over here. This is the one that's connecting the entire uh, tank circuit to ground. And it's uh, listed as something rated it or listed at 292 picofarads. So I went and checked this capacitor, which I normally would not do. It's that guy over there. Now that capacitor, this type of capacitor, has never given me problems in the past. I've always taken it for granted that they're fine. This time it bit me in the ass. This guy as you can probably see, uh, there's some signs of desoldering. That's me having taken it out to measure it. I had to measure this out of circuit. So when I took it out, I'll show you what I get. Forty-six picofarads. So this capacitor is not doing its job. It's supposed to be 192, and uh, I'm getting about a quarter of that. So that led me to believe that we have that capacitor as the main problem. I mean, it's proven itself. And it makes sense. Put it this way, it made sense because I tested it afterwards. And so what I decided to do was to replace that and try again. And the way I did that was I joined two up, 250 and a 47. So that comes out to 297. It's as near as, damn it, uh, sorry, uh, one, uh, two, it was 292, not 192, 292, it's supposed to be 292. I join these two up, in, I'm going to join these two up in parallel, get 297. That is like 2% or something like that off, which is more than enough uh, in terms of accuracy. Um, and we'll see then what the frequency range does on the uh, oscillator. So let's do that next. Here we have it. Those two in parallel come to 297. I've actually measured them on that little simple capacitance meter. It comes out at uh, 304. Well within spec on the 292 that it's supposed to be. Now let's switch this on and see what frequencies we get. Right, so long wave and we're at the top end and we've got a real strange signal but it's around 780 kilohertz 780 minus 460 comes to 320 our uh, bottom of the range there is um, 340 so we're in the ballpark 
Obviously, the adjustments then can be made when I do the RF alignment, the final RF alignment. So let's go the other way and see what we get on the lower end. We're at 5. Okay, first of all, we're getting oscillations all the way to the end of the dial, which is where it is now, and we're at 574. So 574 minus 1460 comes to 115. It's supposed to be 145. Again, we're in the ballpark. Brilliant. Let's try the medium wave. And we're at the end of the dial on medium wave. 960. Call it 960. So 960 minus 460 comes to 500. Our bottom of the medium wave range is 515. Again, we're in the ballpark. Let's go the other way. So now I'm tuning the tuning capacitor up. And what we really want is about it's two something. So we got two one two one seven five two one seven five minus uh, four sixty. You know we're about one seven, thereabouts one seven. Yeah, about that. So again, we're in the ballpark. So it looks like we finally got the oscillator working in the ballpark that it's supposed to be, which is great. Now, lessons learned. One, oscillator circuits are actually quite simple if you don't assume anything. And uh, secondly, those uh, capacitors don't assume anything. Those capacitors can be just as off as the, uh, the paper caps or the those other crummy ones that uh, they go crazy with these radios, the resistors that sometimes uh, get up in value and so on. But there we go. We've got a very nice oscillator signal, very nice sine wave. It's in the ballpark. Obviously, what I'll do next, not next, but ne one of the next stages will be to do the actual IF alignment. Make sure that this thing is resonating or letting through the 460 kilohertz IF. And because I've done all the cap changes in the, in the AM uh, section of the radio, perhaps that's exactly what I'll do next. I'll do the uh, IF alignment first, and then I'll go on to the um, RF alignment to correct these dial positions to where they're supposed to be, so that our dial corresponds to the stations or the frequency we're actually receiving. So there, that's uh, the little saga for today. All capping has been done. This oscillated problem seems to be fixed and we've got to carry on with this because I'm really, really anxious to hear something from the FM, which is one of the main reasons why I restore these radios is I like the FM. Uh, but uh, there's no point leaving these things behind because they do tend to bother you. And sometimes when you get to the end, um, you know, you wish you'd just gone on with it in a, in a certain order, which is what I've tried to do here. All right.